All right, so 2012 Ford F-150 with the 3.5 liter EcoBoost. Guess the customer put her in the ditch. It's been icy, and uh, ever since then, the engine light's gone on, and the vehicle won't do over 35 miles an hour, so let's see what we got. And I'm just going to run a code scan, and I'll get you back here. All right, so... Welcome back to my channel, by the way. Um, code scan's done. Looks like the engine's throwing a, oh, what the hell code number is that? A P0087 fuel rail slash system pressure too low on bank one. And then we also have a 174 system lean on bank two. And it looks like a P053F for cold start fuel pressure performance on bank one. So looks like we're going after a fuel pressure issue. Um, let's pull up some quick scan data and see what that fuel rail pressure sensor is reading. All right, so we're in engine. Um, what we want to look at is our fuel trim O2 sensor data. And let me just uh, limit this up and uh, get what I want on the screen here. All right, guys, I was in the wrong menu. So you want to go into emissions, EVAP, fuel system data. I believe fuel pressure is going to be in here. Let's take a peek real quick. Let's see what we got. I just want to see what this fuel pressure sensor on this rail is reading. Oh, let's see gonna give it to me fuel rail pressure actual in bar desired 53 oh wow so we can see already that we're a little low um, let's look at the voltage all right so let's uh limit this up and then uh, I'm gonna start this and actually I'm gonna see about getting a fuel pressure gauge on this and see if that's accurate if that is accurate now this is in bar and this is in PSI so um, yeah we're gonna have to do some conversion here so um, let me uh, let me limit this up and uh, we'll figure that out and then I'll get you back here Alright guys, so I've got this thing running, and you can see that my fuel rail pressure is at, uh, is hovering around, oh, I don't know, 50, around 50 PSI, we'll say, and our desired is well in the 200 PSI range, so, uh, clearly, we have a fuel pressure issue, um, looking looking like the high side fuel pressure issue. So, um, it's possible we, maybe he damaged the, uh, you know, damaged something, but, uh, you know, I don't know. You know, ever since he went in the ditch, this apparently occurred. So let's uh, look at list view. It could be a coincidence. I don't, I have no idea. Um, I'm gonna put up some fuel trims just to see Hopefully they give me fuel trims in here. Uh, let's see. And I'm not sure if I'm looking at low side on one of these, but sometimes they, they don't label them real well. You know, because here we've got one that says actual in bar, so we could be looking at the low side. Let's pull this up once with the bar on there. Right. So we're running at about 3.6 bar. Uh, let me look up conversion there to see if uh, if uh, that's correct or not. So give me a second to do a conversion real quick. So about 3.6 to 3.9. All right, so I got Master Google up here doing my conversions for me. So 52.2 pounds. So 52.2 PSI is about 3.6 bar. 
and you can see our fuel rail pressure uh, is at about 52.2 so um, that is concerning because it wants 220 and uh, we're only getting 52 out of her so really all we can do at this point is uh, check the low side see what our low side pressure is and see if we're within spec so I think the next step is uh, I'm gonna do a quick visual of the truck too because he put it in the ditch I wanted to see if anything got damaged kinked maybe he kinked a fuel line or something um, who knows you know so let me do a visual and I'll get you back once I get that completed and um, we'll get a fuel pressure gauge on the low side if that's the case and make sure everything is reading accurately and go from there all right so I hooked up uh, I hooked up my pressure gauge to the low side of the fuel pump the high pressure fuel pump there as you can see now the fuel rail pressure sensor lives behind this intake um, and I inspected you know underneath the vehicle just to make sure he didn't you know damage any of his fuel lines I didn't see any damage um, I didn't see any damage to any harnesses or anything like that um, however if you look um, according to our fuel rail pressure sensor we're reading yeah, around 39 psi which is low because again it, it's it's calling for about 2.4 2.4 bars okay now if we look at our fuel pressure gauge on the low side we are hovering right around 65 64 psi um, the spec on this Keon engine running is right around that so we obviously have a discrepancy here when it comes to our fuel rail pressure sensor um, the other thing I noticed is if you listen you can hear that clattering that's that high pressure pump so I think the next thing to do <clears throat> is uh, I want to actually check the fuel rail pressure sensor and see what we're getting for voltage on it and see if it matches um, what we're getting here um, I, I suspect it will but um, you know most likely we have a bad fuel rail pressure sensor but we can't assume so we'll do the checks on it um, and then we'll check the wiring so another thing I wanted to kind of cover here is right now I have the key on engine off um, if you look we're steadily climbing on our fuel rail pressure actual 13.3 um, bar which is pretty close to what the actual fuel rail pressure sensor um, is it is pretty much spot on to what the fuel rail pressure is putting out uh, as as an interpreted um, uh, PSI now what's interesting is we're hovering around 55 PSI on our actual gauge so <clears throat> um, desired is 53.6 so I don't know if I'm really convinced at this point that we actually have a fuel rail pressure issue, uh, sensor issue. I, I, you know, I'm suspecting that we might have a regulator issue. Um, <clears throat> these have fuel pump driver modules um, that are part of the. Uh, they're I believe they're on the they're external on the ec outside of the tank. So my next step is is I'm going to go down there and look and see if maybe some damage occurred to it. Um, since he did put it in the ditch and uh, kind of take a look at that and just make sure we don't have any damage to the fuel pump driver module but if you look um, low side pressure is staying pretty steady at 55 psi on my gauge but on here uh, fuel rail pressure I'm sorry I'm losing my damn mind of course it's gonna read, you <laughs> big idiot. Of course it's gonna read different um, because I'm on the low side uh, before the high pressure sensor. So um, this is just, 
just kind of confusing to be honest with you. So the fuel rail pressure desired um, is 53.6. There's got to be another fuel fuel pressure sensor. Let me go look at this a little bit closer and I'll get back. All right, guys, I did some more research. Um, so, if I wasn't such an idiot, <laughs> nevertheless, um, okay, our, our fuel rail pressure sensor is fine. It's reading right where it's reading accurately. What's happening is, is um, we've got a failed high pressure fuel pump. Um, you can see that at idle here, we want about 245 psi on our fuel rail pressure, and Obviously, we're way low. I could be surprised. I am surprised that this thing is even running, to be honest with you. But it is running really rough now. Um, you can see our fuel rail pressure uh, voltage is hovering around 0.54. So um, <clears throat> the dead giveaway here that we got a high pressure pump problem is that clattering. I'll get you closer so you can hear it. So what I want to do, to be honest with you, is um, I'm going to remove the high pressure pump and I'm going to inspect it and uh, see what's going on because <clears throat> obviously we're way low on fuel pressure. So um, I am going to climb under just to double check that fuel pump module, but I don't see any issue with the low side since the low side is... oh right where it's supposed to be at around 64 psi so um yeah i think we just have a, a failed fuel pressure um high pressure fuel pump and uh you know really outside of checking the the powers and grounds to it uh you know this is pro this is a mechanical failure so i really can't check fuel pressure um on it on the high side so the next step is, is I'm, I'm going to remove the high pressure pump. Um, I know you're not supposed to, but uh, without replacing lines and stuff. But, um, you know, i got to be 100% here. So I'll get that out. We'll take a look, and I'll get you back. All right, so I've disconnected the harness, and I've disconnected the low side line, of course. And then I've cracked this free to relieve the pressure. Now, obviously... If there was 200 some PSI in there, you want to be careful. I know some of you guys are going to be yelling at the screen and being like, you can't disconnect that. Well, guess what? I just did. So once I get this line out of the way, I'll pull this pump out and we'll inspect the shaft um, and see if it's worn. I, I have a feeling that we're going to find something here. So this is the easiest thing to do, guys. Um, I know procedures tell you not to crack lines whatever on these high pressure pumps you just got to make sure that when you you that you use common sense when you're disconnecting your high side line okay use common sense if there's 500 fucking if there's 500 psi in here you're obviously going to have um the potential to you know injure yourself or or something along those lines so just use common sense it's not that big of a deal i'm going to pull this pump out and we're going to take a look I'll clean up around here before I do that, but um, yeah, I'll get you back once I get the pump out. Alright guys, so I got the high pressure pump out, and um, lots, of, lots of fuel is leaking past the, uh, whatever you want to call it, the, the arm basically fuel is leaking through here um, this is a you know it, there's no doubt about it it's a failed pump um, I did pull out the roller follower for the pump itself which this just basically rides right there and then the cam drives the plunger that produces the high pressure um, there's no damage to it looks good it's not pitted um, I did check the cam lobe to see if there was any damage to the cam lobe. There wasn't. Um, <clears throat> I just had somebody jump in there. I plugged off the fuel, um, the low side fuel supply, 
and then just had them crank over um, the engine so I could just check the, the cam lobe. And I used an inspection mirror, and then I also used my finger just to run it across there because um, a lot of times your finger can pick up anything, um, any issues as far as wear goes. So there's nothing wrong with the cam, nothing wrong with the uh, roller, follower, um, just needs a higher pressure pump. Uh, so so that I show that, I gotta put this back together. We're obviously not gonna get that today, so that being said, uh, yeah, I'll try to make a follow-up video if I can of the repair, but um, it's gonna get a high pressure pump. Um, we'll probably do an oil system clean on it and change the oil since it's been dumping oil um, fuel down in the valve cover, or you know, down across the cam. And um, that way he'll have nice clean oil again. Um, but that's pretty much it. Just thought I'd show you that and uh, hopefully I can make a follow-up video. Thanks for watching.